I'm Emily on the Flutter team. This video covers why you might want to use Animated Builder or Animated Widget versus other animation widgets and how to use them. Suppose you want to add an animation to your app. The particular animation you want to do repeats a couple times or needs to be able to pause and resume in response to something like a finger tap. Because your animation needs to repeat or stop and start, you'll need to use an explicit animation. As a reminder, we have two broad categories of animations in Flutter explicit and implicit. For explicit ones, you need a controller. For implicit ones, you don't. We introduced animation controllers in the previous episode on built-in explicit animations, so if you'd like to learn more about those, check that out first. So, you've determined that you need an explicit animation. There are a whole host of explicit animation classes for you to choose from. Those are generally the classes named Foo Transition, where Foo is the name of the property you're trying to animate. I recommend seeing if you can use one of those widgets to accomplish your needs first before diving into the deep world of animated widget and animated builder. There's an amazing selection of widgets for pretty much anything you can think of. Rotation, position, alignment, fading, textile, and many more. Plus, you can compose these widgets so they can rotate and fade. But if none of those built-in widgets can do the trick for what you're looking for, it's time to build your own using animated widget or animated builder. To make this more concrete, Let's walk through a specific scenario. I want to write an app with an alien spaceship and have a spaceship beam animation. Uh, yeah, something like that. I drew a spaceship beam with a gradient that fades from yellow to transparent, beginning the fade at the very center of the gradient. Then I create the beam shape from that gradient with a path clipper. If you want to know more about path clipping, you can check out my code linked in the description. I want to create a beam down animation starting from the center of that gradient and I want to make it repeat. That means I need to create an explicit animation. Unfortunately, there's no built-in explicit animation to animate funnel-shaped gradients, but you know what we do have? Animated widget and animated builder do the trick. To make this animate, I'm going to wrap this gradient code in an animated builder widget. The gradient code will go in the builder function, which gets called when the animated builder builds. Now. I need to add a controller to drive this animation. The controller will provide the values that Animated Builder will use to draw new versions of the animation frame by frame. As you saw in the previous episode, I mix in the single ticker provider state mixing class and instantiate the controller in the init state function so that it only gets created once. I create the controller in init state rather than the build method because I don't want to create this controller multiple times. I want it to provide new values to animate with each frame. Since I created a new object in init state, I add a dispose method and tell Flutter that can get rid of that controller when the parent widget is no longer on screen. Then I pass that controller to the animated builder, and I can see the animation in action. You may recall in the tween animation builder episode, we made use of the child parameter as a performance optimization, and we can do that with the animated builder too. Basically, if we have an object that never changes over the course of the animation, we can build it ahead of time and just pass it to animated builder. In this specific case, a better way to accomplish the same thing is to give Beam Clipper a const constructor and just make it const. It's less code and the object is created at compile time, making things even faster. Sometimes though, you'll be coding something that doesn't have a const constructor and that's a good case for when to make use of that optional child parameter. So we have our animation, but the build method that contains the animated builder code is a little large. If your build method is starting to get hard to read, it's time to refactor your code. You could pull your animated builder code out into a separate widget, but then you just have a build method inside of a build method, which is a little silly. Instead, you can accomplish the same animation by creating a new widget that extends the animated widget. I'll name my widget beam transition to be consistent with the foo transition naming convention for explicit animations. I pass in the animation controller to beam transition and reuse the body of the animated builder's builder function. Just like animated builder, if appropriate, I can add a child parameter to my widget as a performance optimization so it gets built ahead of time instead of every time I animate. Just a reminder though, in this example, making my beam clipper take a const constructor is the best way to go. I just showed how animated builder and animated widget can both be used to accomplish the same type of explicit animations when you can't find a built-in explicit animation to do what you want. So which one should you use? It's really a matter of taste. Generally speaking, I recommend making individual widgets, each with a separate job, which in this case is animating. That's a vote in favor of using animated widget whenever possible. 
But if your parent widget that creates the animation is pretty simple, maybe making a separate standalone widget for your animation is just too much extra code. In that case, Animated Builder is all you need. Stay tuned, in the next video we'll take a look under the hood at how animations in Flutter actually work. For additional documentation on animations, head on over to flutter.dev. Wow, that was amazing. Hi, I'm Fitz from the Flutter team. On December 11th, we're going to have Flutter Interact. We'll have a live stream here for you to watch, and I hope you can join us.